Hello, I'm Philip Brunel, Artistic Director and Founder of Vocal Essence and Organist Choir Master at Plymouth Congregational Church in Minneapolis. Every day, I've looked at music of a different composer, a composer that's had a role to play with both organizations, and today it's the English composer Imogen Holst. Born in 1907, passed away in 1984. She was a composer, <clears throat> arranger, conductor, teacher, and amanuensis. Amanuensis is one of those unusual words that you don't hear that often. It has to do with taking the music of a composer. Maybe they've sketched something, but they need it to be now refined and said, okay, make this work now for flutes, oboes, clarinets, bassoons, whatever. She was someone who could do that, and she was very involved with Benjamin Britten in doing that kind of work for him. For 20 years, she was the co-artistic director at the Albro Festival, the festival that Benjamin Britten and Peter Pears founded in the late 1940s. She also, at one time, took Benjamin Britten's anthem, Rejoice in the Lamb, and orchestrated it when Britten originally had composed it just for organ with choir. She wrote chamber music, she wrote recorder trios, and today we're going to listen to some of her choral music, charming music that she did, a piece that I first became familiar with, a work that she wrote in 1940 called A Hymn to Christ. It's a text of John Donne, and uh, you can hear it's a very kind of homophonic. Everybody moves pretty much at the same time, and you have the beautiful kind of uh, chordal idea that she used throughout all of her music. <laughs> John Donne's poetry is so beautiful, and if you knew the words that I was playing with the music, you'd see that she said it very beautifully, and uh, it just makes a great deal of sense, the words, the music coming together. Well, Imogen Holst also later in life, in the 50s, wrote a series of pieces that were for female voices, SSA, soprano, soprano, alto, and harp. 
And the first movement is rather interesting because the harp part is just a, a little ostinato, a little figure repeated over and over and over. Keep playing that, and then the harmonies that come with it for the voices. You get this. So this happens, and so you put that together, and you get. <clears throat> that kind of idea. These were pieces of John Keats' poetry called Welcome Joy and Welcome Sorrow. Early in her life, back in the 1920s, she also wrote a mass in A minor. I'd like to play you a little bit of the beginning of the Kyrie and then the ending, the Agnus Dei, to see how she sort of dovetailed the two of them, making them come together. Um, it's a way, it sounds somewhat like Renaissance music, where you have individual line coming in, and it's, uh, of course, taking the idea of Lord have mercy Kyrie eleison. And then that same idea, when you come to the final movement, on your stay, now you have this. And then the second voice comes in. All of her life, Imogen Holst also did everything she could to promote the music of her father, Gustav Holst. Some months ago, we featured Gustav Holst's music on Musical Moments, and she all her life felt that he, because he was a rather um, sedate man, didn't always promote himself, though of course I'm sure you all know some of his music, like The Planets, one of his big hits, but she also did everything she could to promote his music as well as then her own. She was a very vivacious woman. I was at Alborough one time conducting and hoped to meet her, but she was ill at the time. We were not able to meet, and I'm sorry about that because I would have liked to thank her for all that she did for music making in England. Have a wonderful day.